Okay, let's look at key exchange methods. And the two methods we'll look at are using discrete logs and elliptic curve methods. This was the original method that was used in uh, creating key exchange. And this is the method that's most likely to be used these days. Okay, so the, me the first method we'll look at is known as the Diffie-Hellman key exchange method. And it uses discrete logs. And when we look at discrete logs, we think of Napier's uh, logs where if we have g to the power of a to the power of b that's equal to g to the power of a b if we have g to the power of a times g to the power of b that is equal to j g to the power of a plus b and we make this discrete logs by taking the mod operation mod n. This creates what's called a finite field and that we only get values between 0 and n minus 1 so it constrains the values that we return. Okay so let's look at discrete logs. So the problem that we have is how does Alice communicate with Bob yeah. So we have Alice and Bob. So how can they communicate openly, even though Eve might be listening, and exchange values and then end up with the same secret? Normally the secret is a session encryption key. And that was solved by uh, Whitfield Diffie. And we define it as the Diffie Hellman method. Okay, so for this method, uh, we have Alice and we have Bob. Initially, they agree on a generator value, G, and a uh, prime number n. Okay, so that's known to everyone and it's not a secret. The so typical value might be 2 or 3 and n has a certain number of bits in it. Uh, typically these days that's at least 1000 bits, could be 2000 and it could even be 4000 bits long for the prime number and the computational difficulty is that even though we know g and n then it's not possible within a reasonable time scale to work out the value of x okay so initially alice will generate a random value A and Bob will create a random value B. This is the secret value that is initially generated when they want to communicate with each other. Then Alice generates G to the power of, it, of A mod N where N is the remainder of a division with n. That's g to the power of a mod n. Bob, on the other hand, generates g to the power of b mod n. And we'll call that a and we'll call that b. They exchange these values and then Alice takes her secret value and raises that value she's received to the power of A. 
and then takes mod n again to constrain the value between 0 and n minus 1. Bob will do the same, take Alice's value, raise it to the power of b, then take mod n. Now this is g to the power of b a, and this is g to the power of a b. So we end up with g to the power of a b mod n g to the power of a b mod n and the values will be the same on either side. We typically then create use a key derivation function to take this value and to create an encryption key which can then be used for the session between Bob and Alice. If we take an example of this, so let's say that g is equal to 3 and n is equal to 9, 9, 7. It would obviously be much greater than this, but we'll keep it fairly simple. Now a is 5, say, and b is 7. So 3 to the power of 5 mod 997 is 243. And 3 to the power of 7 mod 997 is 193. 193 to the power of 5 mod 997 comes out as 64. And then over here, 243 to the power of 7 mod 997 also comes out as 64. And so they share the same value. Okay, so in practice, the values that we're going to use will be very large indeed, typically, as I said, at least 2,000 bits for this prime number uh, here. The other method that we use is elliptic curve methods. So with elliptic curve methods, we might have an elliptic curve that could have this type of form. Okay, one example of this is y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7. And we also have the mod of a prime number. Okay, so this creates in its analog form an elliptic curve. For this we create a discrete one with this mod p operation. And then we end up with, with what's called the generator point, or g. What we do then is to add g many times. So if we want to add it a times, then we end up with another point of elliptic curve, which is a g. And it's really a g added a times to give us this multiplicative. So rather than having an exponential function, we have a multiplicative function with an elliptic curve. And the two basic operations that we have is a point double and a point add. And we can very quickly perform our operations here using that. This time though, the prime number is much smaller than the one that we have here. Typically 256 bit prime number is used. Uh, in one case, that is 2 to the power of 255 minus 19 is used in curve 25519. Okay, so we end up with our 
curve and with our points. And we would typically define base point A as the private key and AG is the public key point. So that's a point on the elliptic curve. So with the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman method, or ECDH, what we have again is A and B that are generated. Next, Alice sends the point AG on the curve, and Bob will send the value BG there. Next, Alice takes the value received and multiplies by A. And then Bob will do the same, take his value and calculate this value. And in the end, they will end up with the same point. Because of the way that the multiplications work. Okay, so they end up with the same point A, B, G on the curve. Often what then happens is that we take the X coordinate of this point and the X coordinate is then put into a key, key derivation function on either side and then we'll create the same shared key between the two. Okay, so that's the two main methods that we would use in terms of key exchange. Diffie-Hellman method and elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman method. There's one more method, but it's not that liked. The other method we can use is where Alice and Bob have a public key and a private key. What happens is that one of them will generate a key to be used and then Alice will encrypt that key with Bob's public key. On the other side, Bob will then decrypt that encrypted key with his private key. And in the end, they will both use the same key from there. So this is the third method, but this method is not liked these days because a long-term hack or a hack of the private key at some time will release all of the encrypted keys that were passed in, in the past. Okay, so generally we started here with Tiffy Hellman. This was open to attack. We moved really towards this encrypted key exchange method using public key but now we're generally working with an elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. Okay the methods that I've outlined here could be open these two methods could be open to an eve in the middle so there is another level above this that allows both Bob and Alice to identify themselves as part of the key exchange. So both the methods that we outlined can suffer from Eve being in the middle and communicating with Bob and Alice because we're never really communicating uh, the, the keys, identifying the, the endpoints within the session.